Well, thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do, because a few of you are asking about the cost of running such a vehicle like this on an overland trip, then I feel like I need to sit down, go through what we've costed, and how much we've, you know, how much the holiday has cost, and basically run through everything. So, first thing I, I would like to explain is overlanding is very different to. An holiday. Uh, on an holiday what you'll probably give yourself is a time scale. So what you'll probably do is say you, you, you look at maybe booking you know a 10 day holiday and it's going to cost £3,000. With overlanding it, it's very different. Overlanding is a case of you've got £3,000 now you're going to make that last as long as possible. So overlanding is very different from an holiday so before I go too much into costs as well you know you, you've probably seen this truck out and about and first thing I mean what are your reactions you know I've got more money than sense how many miles to the gallon does that do you know these are some of the questions I get asked time and time again and I know the fuel costs at the moment uh, throughout Europe and around the world are actually on the increase but still nevertheless running a vehicle like this doing an average of 10 miles per gallon it's still much cheaper to run this than to go on say your, your average package holiday so the cost what I'm going to in include is not only for myself but for uh, Helen my partner as well now thinking if we were family you know a couple of kids then you know the vehicle would be kitted out to, to cater for you know, a full family now a package holiday as you know you pay per person you know usually it's priced on a couple and if there's family or there's kids or, or anything then obviously that's added on to the cost as well so bear this in mind that the vehicle does 10 miles to the gallon bear in mind we're trying to make X amount of money last as long as possible okay so before i take a seat and we'll get too comfy i want you just to ask yourself the last time you went on a package holiday how long was it for and how much did it cost and we'll compare the costs of this truck to your package holiday continuing our many adventures we bought a fire truck back in 2015 intentions to convert it to a camper and explore the world. Join us, we are EB257. Right, before we leave this place I've got to show you because this is one of the best places we've stayed on the island of Sicily right and it's free it's a wild camping place and it's set within a 1950s village it's a ghost town so there's nobody living here we've got a church we've got a police building we've got even a school at the back there but that's not the most impressive thing. The most impressive thing is the view. I'll call this. I don't think there's one view in Sicily over Mount Etna that can beat this one. Unless you stood right at the very top there. So firstly, let's have a look at the vehicle. This particular overland vehicle is a Mercedes 1222 AF. AF meaning four wheel drive. So it's got a permanent four wheel drive. It's got the locking central diff and the locking rear diff. Now, this will actually increase your fuel consumption, but it also gives you the ability to actually get a little bit further away off the tarmac roads than what a normal, say, motorhome or camper van would do. Yes, it's quite large, and it can carry a lot of kit. Now, again, going back to the time scale side of things, 
when you are on an overland trip, you're not just going for one week, you're not going for two weeks, you're going to be going for two, three, four months, maybe even years, even longer. So everything you want, what you would have in your house, you're going to have in here. So not just the basic things like a cooker and a washing machine, you're going to be having all the kit, what you're going to need to pacify your time. So looking at the weight of the vehicle then, EB is actually running around about nine and a half tons at the minute. So she's, she's uh, quite underweight, so she's running light at the minute. Now compare that to a normal small van or camper van, then obviously you are limited with how much gear you can actually take. So, so bear this in mind when you see a vehicle like this, it's not, we're not just away for two weeks and we've got you know 14 pairs of socks and pants we've got that plus all the other all the other items what else uh eb is actually designed for getting away from the campsite so i've al already mentioned about four wheel drive but we're carrying 400 liters or a maximum 400 liters of fresh water on there now that and including the waste tanks or the size of the waste tanks, we can quite easily stay in a place just like this for a week and a half. In fact, if we slightly ration the water, we could probably manage two weeks here quite easily. So when you see a vehicle like this, don't think it's all about mine's bigger than yours. It's more about we can certainly go longer out in the wild and wild camp much longer than what a normal motor home or a small camper van can do. So just before I get too comfy and sit down and we talk about fuel costs on this trip, just bear the, the, the factors in mind that we are carrying our home here we've got a lot of kit on here what we would have back at home say for instance uh, the other things what I'd like you to think about as well is the insurance side of things now especially in the UK when you look at what we'll call motor homes and some of the the camper vans mainly the motor homes they, they are getting stolen and with them all being very similar then you know if a, a motor home goes missing you park it on a campsite and nobody knows any wiser so uh, so you have got built-in insurance for this not only that uh, you, you'll find out that cars unless you're in Italy will certainly get out of your way you know the vehicle is large enough to deter people from pushing through gaps and pulling out on you hopefully so something like this has got built-in insurance The price of parts, believe it or not, are extremely cheap. Extremely cheap. A new wing mirror in the UK would cost me £28 and that's delivered on a Sunday. Uh, a new screen wash bottle, one of the first things I ever bought for eBay. The screen wash bottle were £43 delivered from Germany. So some of the running costs are very cheap. The tyres, these are all-terrain tyres. The workout around about £460 each, but they are guaranteed, worst case scenario, for 150,000 miles. So same again, when you start looking at the running costs, you look at average car tyres, look how much they cost, look at the, uh, the distance you're going to get out of a car tyre or motor home tyre, then you can soon see that these are actually the cheapest tyres on the market. Not initially to buy, not initially to buy, but nevertheless, you know, fit a set of these and they should last you virtually a lifetime. So let's get comfy then and we'll talk about our trip from the UK down to Sicily and we'll look at the, the, the costs of fuel, the tolls and everything else. So I've got all the figures wrote down now and I'm not going to get anything wrong hopefully because I've got them all, all the figures actually in front of me here. So before I start going through this list, just remember what I said right at the very beginning. Think about last time you went on a package holiday, how much it cost, 
and how long it was for okay so we'll come back to uh, to that question right at the very end we've been on the road now for a week uh, so one month in total our original plan was to go from Dover to Calais and then down through France we're currently at the side of Mount Etna in Sicily so you can imagine the, the journey what we've took down now Dover to Calais was cancelled down to the P&O ferry uh, incident so we had to go from Portsmouth to Alstrem uh, I, if I get any of these names wrong I do apologize but hey -o. so yeah so that ferry incurred a little bit of an extra cost at 285 pound it actually brought us much lower down in France so we saved a little bit on fuel the original Dover to Calais uh, crossing should have cost about £130. So, just making a note of this, with, a, with an overland vehicle, sometimes it's much cheaper to go via ferry, because it's classed as a motorhome, than what it is to put fuel in at 10 miles to, to the gallon. So, uh, just bear that in mind. Our path through France basically went down past Lyon to uh, Genova, and then down to Pisa. So we, we crossed the Alps, uh, or the lower Alps, uh, just just behind Genoble, and the toll, we've only played two tolls by the way, uh, coming down here. Uh, the Fergiers tunnel through the Alps cost £53, so that was by far the most expensive toll we've paid on this trip yeah uh, and it, it was for an eight mile tunnel that were so once we got down to uh, Laverne, Laverno we then caught another ferry down to Sicily that ferry cost 301 pound so the ferry from England to Brittany and the ferry from mainland Italy down to Sicily cost a total of 500 and 86 pound. Now there's been a couple of tolls in there as well, uh, like I say a couple of tolls, but I mean the total in the tolls uh, right, right the way down to Sicily is 73 pound. So we're trying to avoid tolls, we're not, again going back to the idea of overlanding, you're trying to make your money last as long as possible. Tolls are okay if you want to get from A to B quickly, maybe on a holiday, but we're not. We're not in a rush. Uh, it's a case of taking this time and seeing the most what we can see for us money, basically. Right, we've only stopped on uh, an handful of campsites, and three campsites in total. This is where the vehicle comes into its own. We're not dependent on campsites. We haven't got a toilet cassette, we've got a toilet holding tank and that holding tank will certainly last us 10 days. So we're not looking for a campsite to empty his toilet every day or every other day. So three campsites in total came to £35. Right, the fuel costs at the moment in the UK when we left was at £1.89. In France, we were about one euro 85 and in italy one euro 81. Uh, down in sicily the the price per litre now for diesel is one euro 70. so that's a breakdown of the route what we've traveled we have actually come right the way from palermo and gone anti-clockwise around Sicily. So like I said, we are just currently camped on the side of Mount Etna at the moment. So before I tell you the total cost of this holiday, I haven't included food uh, and any luxuries. So what I mean by that is on holiday you probably go out to a restaurant every night or every lunchtime and have a, have a meal which can cost, you know, anything from I guess £35 up to £150. So I haven't included costs. We've been e eating mainly 
uh, and cooking for ourselves. I haven't included any entrance fees to any national parks or any museums or anything like that. So there's no food costs, there's no entry fee costs. So the total cost of this holiday so far, thinking, bear in mind as well, we have got to go back home, but this is going to add, add time on the holiday. So I've only done the cost in one way. So we've got probably about the same amount of cost to go back but thinking it's taken a month to come down and and we see more things on the way back so technically it could take longer than a month to go back home So we've done 1,422 miles, that's 2,288 kilometres. The fuel, uh, this is including nine pound, sorry, nine euros LPG as well. So the total cost in fuel is 1,010 pound. So the total cost of this trip from the UK down to Sicily, including two ferries, which is now we're into his fourth week. We're, yeah, into his fourth week, has now cost one thousand seven hundred and four pound. So how does that compare to your package holiday? Listen, guys, I hope this has helped. I hope it's been a little bit of an insight. If you've got any more questions, put them down below. And until next time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next adventure.